What's up everybody? So today I'm going to be covering the first day of free agency. I'm going to be recapping the entire thing. Some people may say that the Saints were inactive today and there is some truth to that, but we made some moves to help keep this team on its feet and bring back the players we need to bring back and even contact some that are from foreign waters that did not play in New Orleans last year. So it's a very important day to cover. I know we didn't do any blockbuster deals. We didn't sign a James Bradbury or a Byron Jones or anyone else like that. But it's cool. Like I said, some moves were made and important ones at that. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I think we should go ahead and get straight into it. And the first thing that we did today was tender Taysom Hill. The New Orleans Saints placed a tender at the first round level on the backup quarterback Taysom Hill this morning. This is important for many reasons. As a restricted free agent, teams could have offered Taysom Hill X amount of money, and it would have been up to the New Orleans Saints to match that offer. It, it's just all of that. That's how restricted free agency works. And if the New Orleans Saints didn't match the offer, they would for free get to keep Taysom Hill. They'd just have to pay him what they offered. But at this point, the New Orleans Saints, one, have the opportunity to match, and two, if a team decides to take a chance and push for Taysom Hill, if they somehow pay more money on that offer sheet than the New Orleans Saints are willing to match, they will now have to give us a first-round pick. So, the New Orleans Saints pretty much locked down Taysom Hill with this. No team is going to pay as much money as, you know, that we won't match and have to give up a first round pick at the same time, no dice, no dice. To me, this really speaks volumes as to how important Taysom Hill is as a player to Sean Payton, not just as a quarterback, but for a valuable asset at receiver, tight end, man, running back, fullback at times, blocking, whatever, Taysom Hill does it. So this was especially important. Our first move of the day was placing a first round tender that I reported on a, a little while back on Taysom Hill. Very important, like I said, so this pretty much locks him down. Let's move on to the second move that took place today, and I know that wasn't the most major thing, but I promise you some other stuff happened. This one we have is long snapper Zach Wood. So we actually re-signed long snapper Zach Wood on a four-year $4.78 million deal with $1.3 million guaranteed. Now I know you're like, why would I care about a long snapper? Um, he gets a 700,000 signing bonus. It isn't the most important re-signing, but it is one that is sm it's one that is small and just smart to get out of the way early. Like as long as we got this out of the way early and wouldn't have to worry about it at any other point in, in point in time, I 100% endorse it. Zach Wood isn't the most luscious branch on the tree, but he's still a branch that helps the tree stand taller regardless of what he does or or the ability he shows on the field, how much you see from him. What he does is a very important job. If you see a long snapper that, you know, messes up, very, very, very big consequences ensue. Zach Wood is actually one of the best long snappers in the league, believe it or not. So, yeah. Wood has played all 48 games the past three seasons, seeing action on 437 special team snaps. So, you may not see his impact, but I promise you it is felt on the field in some stretch of the word. Now let's get into the two more interesting news pieces. I just kind of wanted to get these out of the way and lay the foundation to really talk about what really caught my attention and what interested me today on another level. The first thing I'd like to talk about is David Onyemata. So David Onyemata is actually a defensive tackle that the New Orleans Saints have had for the past couple of years now. We re-signed him, his contract just expired, we resigned him to a three-year, $27 million deal with $18 million of that guaranteed. Anyamata has recorded 7.5 7, 7 sacks and 17 quarterback hits. That was where I was getting confused over the past two seasons. He moved into the Saints' starting lineup on full-time basis last season because of Malcolm Brown underperforming at times. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, but Sheldon Rankins was dealing with something at the beginning of the season. Last season just seems so hazy to me. But... 
Added in the fourth round in 2016, Anyamata graded well in the opinion of Pro Football Focus in 2017 and 2018. However, they viewed him as a lower end performer upon the moving into the starting lineup last season. The 27 year old defender was viewed as a player who could draw market attention. The Saints were able, though, to lock him down in the uh, tampering period. So that's a very big move. A very big move in my eyes, not just because of Anyamata being a very important piece to our defensive line, which he is, but he's one of the league's best insurance policies. With Sheldon Rankins um, being injured every 11 seconds, it's very important to have someone like David to lean on. He's a great player with immense potential that a decade ago didn't even know that American football existed because he is from Nigeria. So it's great that David is back. Um, when you have players on the defensive line like we do, it is important to retain them and stack up on them. Uh, no matter who gets hurt, there's going to be someone that can step up and be at least extremely suitable. We have Marcus Davenport, Cameron Jordan, uh, Trey Hendrickson, David Anyamata, Sheldon Rankins, Malcolm Brown, Shai Tuttle is an emerging player. All of these great players we have on our defensive line, it's very important we bring one like David Anyamata back because, one, he played a very immense role last year. Uh, if you remember, he went off the Cowboys game, basically iced it. Very important player. He has ice in his veins. Expect David Anyamata to go off very soon. This is a player right here with a lot of potential to turn into one of the league's top-tier defensive tackles. Now... Let's move in to the number four news piece of the day, which is personally one of the most interesting. Now, you remember a couple of weeks ago when I was sitting here preaching about Jamie Collins and about how good he was. Well, the New Orleans Saints actually went ahead and offered him a deal. Um, it did not get anywhere as of now. Uh, apparently, it wasn't enough money for Jamie Collins, but this is a good sign for me 100%. It's nice to see that the New Orleans Saints interest in Jamie Collins hasn't dwindled since I last reported on it a couple of weeks back. We just simply don't have the money to get him at this point in time. Now, I don't know if I don't know if I don't know if it's just that we don't have the money for it or the first offer we gave him just wasn't sufficient. Uh, th this does not by any means take us out of the Jamie Collins race. If anything, it should broaden your mind and be like, yo, the Saints are in this race. We really want to lock down a player like this. Taking a few tries in order to gain a player is completely normal. It took a few contract offers to really get Jared Cook. Uh, they were negotiating for near a week. It is completely normal. I know I compare the Collins and Jared Cook signing a ton, but it just reminds me of they remind me of each other on a huge level. I can't even explain. Um, expect the Saints to make a huge push for Jamie Collins coming up late. As soon as Mickey Loomis does his cap wizardry and re-signs Drew Brees, um, Loomis and company really wants to make this deal happen, and I completely understand why. I'll keep you updated. Another thing about um, Mickey Loomis and the contract situation, I'm going to go ahead and get, actually, I'm going to get Jamie Collins stats out of the way first so that I can give you guys a refresher and let you know what this player is capable of. So Jamie Collins last year at age 30, a player that reminds me strikingly of Demario Davis, had 50 solo tackles, 16 assists, three interceptions which is something that we need in our linebacking group is someone that can pick the ball off three forced fumbles which was first in the league at, at the linebacker position that he played very important right there he had six turnovers probably more than our entire linebacking core definitely important to have that type of player you got a 75.7 pro football focus grade just somebody that will really revamp this defense and get rid of the aj clients that we don't really necessarily need anymore and put this defense and solidify this defense to be one of the best in the league so the thing I wanted to talk to you guys about a little bit is a bit concerning to me so as you know I'm going to take away this picture of Jamie Collins so nobody gets confused this is about Drew Brees right now as you guys know Drew Brees is currently a free agent and whether you like it or not he's going to re-sign with the Saints but th the question is when and when I say the question is when I'm not saying the question is when because of you know how long he's going to delay it when you look at Drew Brees' contract, he has $21.3 million of dead cap that can be pushed back another year if we do re-sign him this year. But the deadline for that money to be able to be pushed back is about 42 hours from now. So when you look at it this way, if the New Orleans Saints get the deal with Drew Brees done within a two-day time period, 
the New Orleans Saints will save $21.3 million in dead cap hit that will be placed upon us if we don't get this deal done. So get pay attention and make sure you watch for a Drew Brees deal getting done very soon. It is extremely important that we don't take our time on this. We got to get Drew Brees and that team or and our management through that as fast as possible. Look for something like a $25 million deal. Mickey Loomis, like I said, will be doing a lot of cat magic this uh, free agency. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of free agency down below. Do you think the Saints didn't do enough? Did you want us to do more? What do you think of this day period? Uh, there were some important things that we did. Uh, for, uh, putting a first-round tender on Taysom Hill. Re-signing David Onyemata. Re-signing Zach Wood. And sending an offer to Jamie Collins for him to consider, which apparently wasn't enough. We're going to be covering free agency like it's crazy this year. That's why I'm making a video on a day that a lot of, seemingly to a lot of people, they think it didn't need a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you boys in the next one when some breaking news happens very soon. Peace out. Adios. I love you guys. Bye.